Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, and comment down in the comment section down below. Now it is the beginning of a brand new month. We are five months away from the general election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And I will be releasing a new 2024 presidential election prediction today in this video. Now, before we get started on this prediction, let's just go over a few background information. Uh, let's first start with the approval rating of Joe Biden, which is uh, still 40.2%. He's disapproved of by, you know, 56%. And that's still uh, pretty even from last month. Nothing too much has changed despite uh, Trump's conviction. And we can see that so far right now in a lot of this evidence, you know, despite Trump's conviction and, um, you know, the subsequent uh, fallout from that and what many people consider something some negative effects that could be possible or some positive effects we don't really see anything too drastic unfolding you know the betting markets as i discussed in a previous video are pretty similar and they're, they're still similar today joe biden's approval rating is still very very negative it, you know it shifts between 39 to 40 percent and the direction of the country as we can see here is still only 24 percent Think it's going in the wrong direction and this and this has been pretty stagnant as well it's stayed pretty firmly from last month so you know a lot of these metrics people's confidence in the president and in the uh country as a whole is still very very negative if we go to the uh polling between joe biden and donald trump on the two-way race we can see trump has a narrow lead and these polls right here have been taken after the conviction and they have been pretty similar to what they were before this poll actually trump gained from the previous one morning console biden only gained two points this one uh trump actually leads by two he gained and then in this one there are so many undecideds that it doesn't really matter too much but it's pretty mixed bag or pretty washed back and forth and on the five-way race we can see the polling still favors trump by a solid amount he's up by almost two percent similar story on uh 538 where Trump still leads by around a percent. Now it's still pretty early, so we don't know too much and we'll continue to analyze and look at the data as it comes in. Now, without further ado, let's get started on this map. We're gonna begin with the safe states, beginning with Joe Biden. And I wanna make a, one little change to my metrics in you know deciding my, my uh, ratings. Safe is still gonna be between, it's gonna be 12 points and above, but likely instead of being seven to 12, it's gonna be six to 12 lean is going to be two to six and then tilt is less than two so all of them really stay the same except you know between the lean and likely margins anyways beginning with safe states for joe biden he will win these states by 12 points or more he's going to sweep the west coast hawaii illinois all of these states up in the northeast and new york i'm going to point out that uh, the states of New Jersey and New York are going to be a lot closer than these margins in 2020, especially I think New Jersey. There has been some pretty, you know, weird polling that has showed New Jersey and New York being closer. There is limited polling, but the polls that we do have in New York and New Jersey, I mean, especially in New York, it's, you know, the same poll and Emerson College and Siena, you know, released a lot of quite a few polls, especially Siena College, and all of them have it at a pretty narrow margin compared to you know biden's over over 20 something point win in 2020 so we're going to keep an eye on that uh, however though i think it'll still be safe these two states i think uh illinois has a shot of being closer to biden didn't win it by too much it was by 17 so it definitely has a shot in being you know maybe under 15 i think that's possible uh back on the map we're going to be adding the first district of maine in biden's safe column and that will be all. He will start with 181 electoral votes in his safe column. And now moving on to Trump's safe states, we're going to begin on the West Coast with Alaska and then all of these states over here. We're going to go down to Kansas, Oklahoma, all of these safe states in the Midwest and in the South. And then we're going to go up and fill out Iowa, Ohio, and then we're going to have Maine's second district. Now, main second district could be either likely or lean somewhere on that border. The reason why I'm putting it in the uh, safe margin is because the polling that we do have, which is very limited, and the data that we do have 
shows Maine being a lot closer than what it was in 2020. Similar to like, you know, a margin that we had in 2016. So we can see here in the first district, sorry, in the second district, Trump is up by 20 in the only poll that we have. And then, and then in the statewide, Trump's up by six. So uh, yeah, but we're gonna keep that in the safe column for Donald Trump. Also in the safe column, moving up from the likely column in last election, are gonna be the states of Iowa and Ohio. Iowa and Ohio have seen pretty significant trends to the right over the past two election cycles since Obama had won them both in 2012 by comfortable margins. We can see here even when the nation had shifted to the left from 2016 to 2020, Iowa still you know, maintained its very rightward trend as well as the state of Ohio. They didn't really change too much from both elections as we can see here. You know, there might be a few areas that Biden does gain on like Cincinnati and the suburbs and maybe Columbus, but the rest of the state is gonna trend to the right and right enough where I think Donald Trump will win both of them by a safe margin, around a 12, 13 point win maybe. Moving on now to the likely states, beginning with Joe Biden. He has two likely states, mainly coming from Colorado and New Mexico. Now Colorado is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. He is gonna win it by a comfortable margin. I don't think he'll win it by this huge of a margin he did in 2020, but since Colorado is probably the most left swinging left trending state he is going to have no problem winning it he will probably win it in the likely column um maybe by around like seven points eight points maybe up to nine but uh, even the polls can say that there isn't too much data but i mean the latest one has biden up by 10. i wouldn't see any reason why biden would struggle winning in uh, colorado and in new mexico this will be closer than biden's 10 11 point win in uh, 2020, but I don't think it'll be a lean state this time around as of now. And, you know, there isn't really much data to prove anything either. Um, if we had more data on Hispanics in the state in general, as we do like in Texas and Florida, then we can maybe make an assumption that it could go in the lean column. But right now we're going to put this state in the likely column, but more on like the lower end of maybe like six to seven points. Next, moving on to Trump's likely states. He's going to have the states of Florida and Texas in the likely column. Florida is very self-explanatory. It's one of the few states that he actually gained in 20, from 2016 to 2020, mainly because of his gains in Miami-Dade and Osceola. You know, a lot of gains, some gains too in Broward and a little bit in Palm Beach. So the majority of Florida's population is located over here. And since they did see big swings to the right, despite a little bit of swing to the left in Jacksonville, the state as a whole swung to the right. And we also keep in mind that Ron DeSantis and Marco Rubio won the, the governor and Senate elections two years ago by 19 and 16 points respectively. Trump's not going to win by that amount. And, you know, it's a possibility that he wins this state by a safe amount. But right now, I'm going to keep it in the likely column. And the polls that we have, you know, indicate that Trump's going to win this state by over 10 points. And the latest one has him up by 13. And even the Democrat super PAC that released their polls has him up still by nine and six. So Florida will not be competitive this time around and is pretty firm in the Republicans column, you know, in this election and, you know, later elections this, uh, in this coming decade and next few decades. And a similar story with Texas, Texas and Florida are going to be very similar this election in the way they vote. But Trump is actually up by 11.1% on average in the polls. The latest ones have him, you know, crushing Joe Biden in every single poll and most of them by double digits. And this is mainly because of, of uh, Trump's crucial gains among Hispanics in the Rio Grande Valley. And this is probably going to be outpacing the suburban trends that Biden gained from 2016 to 2020, mainly around the Dallas area, Austin and uh, San Antonio area. Now, it's going to be pretty crucial to see, you know, where this state swings this election because it's going to tell us what's going to happen in the near future. And this is a state that Republicans must hold in order to win future elections. And this time around, they seem to be performing very, very strong. And I think Texas will be a likely state for Donald Trump this time around. We're going to be going now into the lean states, beginning with Joe Biden's. First of all, the state of West, uh, sorry, Virginia will be going into the lean column for Democrats. This is a state where Joe Biden 
made a lot of gains. You know, he doubled Hillary Clinton's margin from plus 5D to D plus 10. And he made gains everywhere in the state, to be honest. But a lot of that is due to the Nova region, which is extremely diver diverse and very, very favorable for Democrats. A lot of the population lives up here. But this time around, we don't really see that happening too much anymore. And we see here in the polls that it's actually like an almost an even race within the margin of error. We see here some polls, you know, one has it even, you know, these have it by lean margins. I think Joe Biden will still win this state by a lean margin between two and six percentage points, probably in the middle of that range. I'd say probably similar to Hillary Clinton's margin in 2016. Two other states that will be lean for Joe Biden will be the states of New Hampshire and Maine. These also are going to be more similar to 2016. I don't think New Hampshire will fall under two points, but I do think it'll be less than six, but over two, probably both of them in a similar fashion by around three to four percentage points. Maine has been surprising, as we discussed earlier, how close it's been since they are very, very prone to vote for third party candidates. And this will help Donald Trump in the state. And in New Hampshire, there hasn't really been uh, too much data. Originally, Joe Biden had been performing pretty strongly in New Hampshire, but recent polls did show a tightening. Even here with like no undecideds, we can see that Biden does lead by only four. And yeah, I think this state will go in the lean column for uh, Joe Biden. Moving on to Donald Trump's lean states, he will win these states by between two and six percent. And we're going to have the state of North Carolina, a state that he hung on by a, around one percentage point in 2020. He didn't lose too much ground from 2016. Everything went right for Joe Biden. He gained where he needed to. Uh, he gained in the suburbs of Charlotte in the research triangle, but Trump was able to make gains in the south and north of the state, which kept the state from flipping. Uh, this time around, polls do indicate a very strong performance for Trump. He's up 4.8% on average, and in the five-way, it expands to 7%. So this right here is very, very solid for Trump. I think he'll keep the state in the lean column. And these final states right here are going to be the states that decide the election. These are all going to be the states that I think as of now are going to be decided by less than two percentage points. We're going to begin with the state of Georgia. Georgia uh, did vote for Joe Biden by only 12,000 votes. This was possible from huge trends among the Atlanta metro area. Basically, every county that surrounds Atlanta shifted you know, by up to 10 points or more in Biden's column. And this right here is not going to be the case this time around. Biden is super unpopular in the state. His approval rating is absolutely tanked. Trump is up by 4.8% on a head-to-head -head matchup. And in a five-way race, he is up by 6%. He's led every single poll ever released in the state. And there is no reason right now to say that Joe Biden will you know, win Georgia, you know, things could change, obviously. But right now, Trump is obviously the very, very, very favorite. It seems like he's pulled a lot of his funds out of Georgia. He's not going to really tackle Georgia too much. He's more focused on that Rust Belt. So Georgia right now goes as a tilt state for Joe Biden. And we're going to move on to the other Sun Belt states, beginning with Arizona. Arizona, very similar to uh, Georgia, a very left trending state from 2016 to 2020. And wasn't really too much too much movement from 2016 but that little movement in maricopa was just enough because it does have most of the state's population that was enough to put the state in biden's column but similar with georgia you know arizona very very bad polling for biden on the two-way race and the five-way race where trump leads by up to six percentage points similar story where he leads every single poll released the data looks very very good for donald trump in arizona and I think he will pick off the state of Arizona, as well as the state of Nevada. Now, an interesting thing is Nevada always votes to the left of Arizona. But this time around, I think that Nevada will actually vote to the right of Arizona. And that is because Arizona, Nevada has been experiencing very, very favorable trends towards uh, Donald Trump. And it has very, very favorable demographics. You know, Hispanics that are shifting towards Republicans, very non-college educated uh, white collar, sorry, blue collar workers. This is all very favorable for Republicans. And the polls also say the same thing where he's up 5.4% on average. And in the five-way race, he actually leads by 7.2, which is actually the most out of any of these swing states. 
I think Nevada is the easiest flip for the Republicans. It has a lot of potential. You know, they won the governorship two years ago. They came less than a point from flipping the Senate uh, race. So, and Republicans only need to make gains in this one county. Uh, and it did actually trend to the right. They stayed as a whole trend to the right from 2016 to 2020. And Donald Trump making a few point gains in this county alone will you know, give him the state. Right now, I think he will win the state by a larger margin than uh, Arizona, but still under, under that 2% threshold. Now moving up to the Rust Belt, we're going to begin with the state of Minnesota. Now, Minnesota, you know, Biden was able to win by 7%. He won a lot more than Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton actually won only by a tilt margin, but Biden gained a lot in the Minneapolis downtown, you know, Hennepin County, Ramsey County, and then most of the suburbs that surround the Twin Cities. And this time around, you know, despite a lot of the, you know, favorable metrics for Biden in the state, the data doesn't really back that up. And Biden's been very, very bad performance in the primaries in Minnesota. He only got like, I think, 70% of the primary vote, which is horrible for an incumbent. There's a lot of that uh, Palestine conflict uh, that, that people are very not happy with him in the state. And I think a lot of them are going to vote third party in the polls. Do say that this is a lot tighter than last time around. They say he's up by 2.4% on average. And the polls have it tight. You know, these two actually have Trump up. I don't think Trump's going to win it, but I think the state's going to go in the tilt column for Joe Biden. And before moving on to the probably three most important states of the election, let's get Nebraska second out of the way. I think Nebraska second will vote for Joe Biden. It has very favorable trends for Joe Biden. And even though it was redistricted to be more favorable for Republicans, I think Joe Biden will still win by around two percentage points, maybe a lean margin, but for now I'm keeping it in the tilt margin for him. And now moving on to Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. If Trump wins one of these states, he wins the election. Biden would have to win all three of these states to win the election by a narrow amount. We're going to begin with Wisconsin, probably the most favorable state for Republicans. Uh, we can see here that it is a neck and neck race in the polls. Biden leads this one outlier Quinnipiac poll by six. Trump leads you know, most of the rest, and then two of them have it a tie. In the five-way race, Trump expands by a narrow amount, and that Quinnipiac poll that had Biden up by six only has him up by one here. That's pretty interesting to say the least. And I think this state, which, you know, overestimates Republicans a lot, as we saw in these previous uh, dates in the 2020 and 2016 election, Biden was supposed to win Wisconsin by like seven points, as we can see here. Or, yeah, 6.7%. He only ended up winning it by 0.7. So this state is known for overestimating Democrats. And I think this is probably the easiest flip for Trump since he only lost the state by 20,000 votes. Democrats are still obviously going to turn out a lot of their base in Dane County, in you know Madison, but I think in Milwaukee and a lot of these rural counties, Trump is going to make more gains. There's a lot of room for him to grow in these lighter red counties, and I don't think he'll lose too much in the Wow counties. And in all in all, I think this state will be in the tilt column for Donald Trump. Now we're going to move on to the state of Michigan. Michigan is of the Rust Belt Trio, the one where Joe Biden won by the most, upwards of almost two to three percentage points. And he did pretty well all along. He did make gains in you know Kent County. He kept his margins in Wayne County. He gained in Macomb. He did well in Ann Arbor. And a lot of these suburbs, he also did well. This state is probably the most favorable for Democrats out of the Rust Belt Trio. The polls still have Trump up, but it has been narrowing. Biden has been leading in a few more polls over time. And Joe Biden has caught up consistently. As we can see in the five-way race, uh, it is a tie right now. Oops, it is a tie right now. And, you know, Joe Biden leads in half of them. Donald Trump leads in the other half. So it's pretty interesting. Same thing as we can see here on uh, 538. It, Trump leads by only 0.5, and this is you know down consistently from that 3 to 1 point he had previously. And this is one state that uh, Joe Biden definitely has a favorable chance in winning because of how the state is favorable towards him. And obviously he didn't he didn't perform well in the primary. Uh, you know, same thing with Minnesota. But right now I think he does held a slight lead. 
in Michigan, but it really is like a 50-50 at this point. It's really, really hard to tell how Michigan will vote. I think it'll be down to the wire, but right now I'm going to give it to Joe Biden. And finally, probably the most important state, the state of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a state where Joe Biden, you know, was born in. He was from, you know, raised Scranton up here. He was made, he made a lot of gains in eastern Pennsylvania. Western stayed pretty similar. And the reason why he was able to win by around 1.2% was because of those gains that he made in Philadelphia, the suburbs, and north uh, eastern Pennsylvania. But this time around, you know, he, he isn't as popular for that. He's very unpopular in the state. And the polls do show Trump leading a lot more than he did previously. You know, Joe Biden had actually led in this aggregate but at some point, you know, February. And by March, Trump had gained the lead. Biden gained it back. But now Trump has been consistently leading all the polls. So we can see here that uh, despite this, you know, originally, you know, in my eyes being the most favorable state for Joe Biden, it has, you know, returned to a state where Joe, where Donald Trump is more favorable. We can see here even on uh, 538, similar story. And if we check the five-way race on Real Clear Politics, Trump actually gains up 3.2%. I think Trump will actually flip the state back and I think he'll win it by less than two percentage points. And I think he'll do this by making more gains in Philadelphia. And I think he will reverse a lot of these trends that Joe Biden made around, you know, eastern Pennsylvania to go back in his favor. And this is the final map I have. I have Trump at 297, Biden at 241. Trump will flip Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Biden will hold on to Michigan by a very, very narrow amount. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll check you guys out in the next one.